Alrighty, guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, I don't think we're gonna have numbers. Um, in the way of announcements, um, there's not a lot. Uh, I don't think Lucy's on. Lucy, if you chime in afterwards, holler at me. But she, um, her youngest baby's birthday was today, so they're doing a family thing. Uh, so first and foremost, <clears throat> many of you know, um. Uh, as tomorrow, there's going to be some things that are going to be launching. Make sure you're going and checking your workstation. Make sure that you are um, reaching out to your customers because some of the things that had been gone um, are coming back. Now, again, remember, guys, these are the LTOs. They're limited time only. So you got to get them when you can get them. And once they're gone, you can't promise anything. So just remember, uh, make sure you're checking the product list. You should be checking that almost every day anyways. Um, especially right now, make sure that you've gone to the workstation and you know when cutoff days are for Christmas. Don't promise, um, don't over promise and under deliver for your customers because that's not fun. Um, keep in mind, a lot of people, sometimes they will tell them the cutoff date that Scentsy gives you. I don't tell my customers the cutoff date that Scentsy gives me because Jessica will not be traveling on Christmas Eve to go deliver an order. I'm just not doing that. Now, if you want to do that, by all means, you can do that. But make sure that when you're, you're that cut, if Scentsy's telling you the cutoff day is 24th, that you're going to have time to package that order and get it together. So just um, make sure you're aware and you're keeping track so that you do not over promise and under deliver for your customer because that is the worst. Um, <clears throat> other ways of announcements i don't um think i have anything else that's pressing um the only other thing that i will say really quick and then any other director or in any leader that's on that if you um if i'm missing anything or you want to chime in chime in but guys um the 22 dollar or 20 something dollar i can't remember how much we paid 22 i believe for world tour is not available anymore um, you can only do the $11, I believe, the streaming only. Guys, $11 is going to be the best investment you can make in your business. If you're not signed up for World Tour, if you have team members, um, even if you're brand new and they've barely joined, get them to pay $11 and join because you will be surprised at what, how someone's mindset can change if they get on a training like that, okay? So that's coming from corporate. We're going to be able to see the spring summer catalog. We're going to see some breakouts from other amazing leaders. So don't miss out on legit 11 books. Um, make sure that you do that. I want to say it's sometime in January that is the last day to register. But again, check your workstation because I don't know specifics. I registered on day one. So um, uh, any other leaders have any other things in way of announcements? Um, that is a month. Oh, yeah. Talk about that. <laughs> that of the month has changed. Um, I, I don't remember specifically if it, I think it's continuing going forward, that it is not now on the 15th. They are doing it on the 13th. So your card would be charged on the 15th and your cent of the month would go out. Now it's the 13th. So, like, if you have not enrolled in Center of the Month or Woman of the Month, then you should do it today. Um, at least do it a day or two before. So you'll be one of the first to get your cent uh, and Woman of the Month. Um, so the 13th, you're going to be charged your credit card. Make sure you got that fixed in your workstation. I was looking for specifics. I couldn't find it on my on my work, on my new staff. But I know it's there. I've seen it. Yeah, so make sure you guys go and check that. That's a big one because not just for yourself, but <laughs> also so you can tell your team. <laughs> Says I. <laughs> um, okay, so um, that's all that I have really in the way of announcements. Um, so today the topic we're going to talk about is going to be personal branding. This is huge. This is probably one of my favorite topics to talk about because um, I have definitely done a lot of research. I've done a lot of training. I feel like I have not so much mastered, but I do a really good job of my personal branding. Um, so I want somebody 
to kind of step out of their comfort zone. What does personal branding mean to you? Somebody chime in. I don't care anybody. You can unmute yourself. What does personal branding mean to you? Putting your face on everything. Okay. Somebody else? Adding like a personal touch to your Sensi brand. Like I like adding cactuses to stickers with my samples. That's a good one. Anybody else? <clears throat> yeah, like making you are, yourself be different from others. Like, stand out. Know, yeah, stand out. There you go. Something do you will... want me to go? Yes, go ahead. Yes, I do. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted me to or not because I'm sure you're going to cover everything. Um, so, personal branding is creating a like yourself as the business, like not just a Cincy business, but you are the business, like um, naming your business is personal branding, um, choosing colors, making signs, making flyers, uh, making it like your own personal little store that just also sells Cincy, basically. Love it. Anybody else? I would say something that will make people think of you when they see it. Like Miss Kim Xavier over there. Every time I see a zebra, I think of her. I was going to say zebras. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. Yep. <laughs> Correct. Anybody else? Those are really, really good. And I love it because we're going to touch on each piece of that. Um, yes uh okay so i'm gonna um okay so i did a lot of research for this so i have like notes in front of me and notes on the screen so a personal brand so first and foremost i'm gonna say this and um what does personal branding mean so i really really okay you're gonna be hearing a lot of trainings for me that um maybe the new consultants i don't want you to get scared i don't want you to get overwhelmed i want you to if you're really trying to make this a business Obviously you are because you're here on this call. What I want you to understand that this is next level training, okay? Um, sometimes we do do basic training and we start entry level, like right when you start, but sometimes you're gonna get on here where we're gonna take it up a notch. And this is those times that you're gonna take it up a notch because again, I've told you guys and I tell my team all the time, Sensi is not your brand. Your face and you and your whole vibe is your brand. Sensi is just the vehicle. Your brand is you. People want to join a business. Um, they want to buy from someone that they know, like, and trust. Okay, so you have to learn to build the know, like, and trust factor. But first and foremost, personal branding is a conscious and intentional effort to create and influence um, publicly or people that you know a perception of an individual by positioning them as an authority in the industry or in their particular um, area of work, I would say direct sales, elevating their credibility and differentiating themselves from the competition, the person standing next to them, okay? Um, I know that is a lot, but it covers the whole realm of what personal branding is. It is who you are. It is what you stand for. It's the values you embrace. It's the way in which you express those values. Just as a company's brand helps to communicate its value to customers and stand out from the competition, a personal brand does the same for an individual. And in our case, I mean, as a Scentsy consultant, okay? So it is legit. When I think of brand, I think of all those things that you guys say. I have my branding colors. I have certain things that people think about. If they see an image, they're gonna probably say, I know Jessica did that. Um, if they see some colors, they're gonna, it's gonna stand out to them and they're gonna know if they see something, that's Jessica because she's extra. You know what I mean? Like that is who I am. It is what I portray. It is how I um uh I'm not gonna say, well, it is communicate, but that is how I um bounce back and forth every day how i vibe with my customers with my team with facebook with instagram like it's a whole vibe literally okay um from to everything you guys just talked about but more importantly who you are okay 
I'm going to be totally honest with you and transparent. When it comes to a personal brand, yes, you want to keep it professional, right? You definitely want to keep it professional, but never lose focus of who you are, okay? Um, I cuss. I got a bad mouth. I'm not going to stop doing that just because I don't want to seem some type of way. It's me. That's the way I post. <coughs> <coughs> That's the way I talk. I'm not changing for anybody. That's part of my brand. I, um, I, I'm happy and I exude my culture. I'm a Latina and I put that everywhere. As you can see, Latina Wax Boss is on a lot of my stuff. Um, I always have some type of pink, whether it be like a muted pink, a blush pink. Sometimes during the summer, it may go towards a little hotter pink, but there's a vibe to my colors, right? Um, I um, am a mom. I talk about my kids a lot in anything and branding and things that I'm doing. If I am trying to tell a story on social media, um, I, the story of my brand is all of those things intermingled together. Literally, it's who I am. And I think a lot of people get stuck on the idea that they're a Scentsy consultant, but you have so many other things that you are before a Scentsy consultant, okay? Um, and I'm gonna tell you, if you lead with the fact that your brand is a Scentsy consultant, you're gonna struggle. You're gonna struggle because everybody is gonna see you just as the other 200,000 consultants out there. What is it that is going to make you stand out? That is what you have to think about. A lot of the things that you guys mentioned are those things. Um, but once you've already mastered one or two, take it up a notch. Once you've mastered three or four, take, <clears throat> take it up a notch. And your, your whole branding, everything you do, everything you put out, um, that's you. That is your business. So you have to be very mindful of that, okay? Um, people don't do business with companies. They do business with people that they know, like, and trust, like I said. Um, there's just something about a connection with a human being that creates a level of endearment and customer loyalty beyond any relationship a company could ever reach. So true. Um, the strong bonds people have with one another, you, you can't overestimate those. Like you can't um, think that those aren't important. Like social media is not our business. Sensi is not our business. The people are our business right? They're the people that we have to get to know, like, and trust us, right? So I want you to keep those things in mind when you're thinking about what personal branding is, okay? Um, can I say something super quick? Yes, you can. I love what you said because I have something to add to that. So when I first started as a Cincy consultant, I thought that I needed to act a certain way and like be a certain way. I mean, you, you all know what I mean by that. But like the facts about me are I'm a loudmouth feminist. I am very anti-racism, all of these things. Like that's who I am as a human. And I have finally figured out that that's just who I am and my customers are gonna come to me either way. Um, and I stopped trying to like hold myself back for fear that I would lose a customer because another one will come. The only thing that I do not do is I do not talk politics on social media. That's just something I don't do because that's a, a very tricky situation. So I don't do that. But as far as everything else, how I feel about life and everything, I, I let people know for sure. So I love that you said that. Yes. Um, and I'm right there with you. I don't really put that on social media. I don't care to, and that, you know, totally up to the person. Um, but again, I, I it took me a, a little while to realize that I am who I am. And just like you said, your people are gonna find you and the people that ain't your people are gonna retract from you. And that's okay because they weren't your people to begin with. Um, so, um, so I want you to understand personal branding is one story. I, if you've heard me train on any other trainings, you know that I am big on um, social media, on just your personal brand. Like you got to tell a story. 
What is your story? What is your message that you're trying to get out to people, right? Whether it's selling products, whether it's getting somebody to join your team, whether it's getting somebody to take a sample, whatever the case may be, your personal brand is your story, okay? That story can play an important role in establishing or boosting your business. Um, I, I really like uh, your personal brand should highlight your strengths. It should definitely establish a reputation. You should build trust with people. Communicate the unique attributes that you bring to your company, to your business. Um, cultivated well, your personal brand will signal to customers or people whether or not you'll be the right fit for them. Again, like I said, you're, you will attract people you're supposed to attract if you are true to yourself. Now, if you're over here trying to be somebody that you're not, you will not get caught up in some BS that you don't want to be in. Like, you know, that's when things are just not going to work. It's not, it's not authentic. It's not real. Don't be fake. Nobody likes fake. Um, and sooner or later, you will be revealed. Like, be who you are, embrace who you are, and start there. Um, <clears throat> developing a brand, a personal brand, and the whole realm of it may seem like, oh, how do I do that? Where do I start? What do I do, right? But there are steps that you can take to build that. And, you know, I didn't have everything we talked about in the beginning. It's been almost 10 years of building what my brand is, what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like, what it acts like. I've built that, okay? So wherever you're at in your business, know that you can always level up like we've always talked about. Um, you can change it. You, as you change, your brand may evolve and that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna give you 10 tips for developing your personal brand, okay? Um, so number one, just like we talked about, figure out who you are in order to build a personal brand that accurately reflects your personal business and your personal life. You first need to know who you are. Don't be fake. Um, you know, write down, and this is, I'm going to tell you, it may sound tedious and it may sound like, ugh, do I really want to do this? But when I really had to step outside and say, okay, Jessica, Cincy is not your brand. You are your brand. Your face is your brand. Okay, what do you want your brand to look like? What do you want it to feel like? If you were to look at it, would you be like, damn, I, I, that's attracting me. Um, if it doesn't, then you got to sit down and rebrand. Um, and these are some of the things that you can ask yourself. Uh, what areas do you excel in? What is your characteristics? What is somebody complimented you on? What motivates you? Um, what, what, um, what projects have others had to help me with repeatedly, right? Which projects can I spend hours on? And it's just something that I absolutely love and why some of those things are going to get you to start. And, and a lot of the questions that you guys just said, what are the colors that I associate the most with? Um, what is like an emoji or um, an element? I say element because I use Canva. What is an element? Like what an element in like, People were saying a cactus, a heart, a sunflower, a zebra. Um, what are those things that I'm drawn to? Leopard, cheetah. Like, what are those? What are those things that if? And I'll tell you what a lot of Cincy consultants do when they're trying to figure this branding out. They will go on social media and say, "Okay, tell me five things that you think about when you think of me, other than Cincy." Because the first one they're gonna probably say is Cincy, right? Ask those questions to people that are close to you, to people that are on Facebook. Um, because <laughs> those are really probably the closest people that we have right now, right? Okay, so um, again, if you're struggling to answer these questions, ask friends, family, coworkers, how they would describe you. Once you're more aware of the different facets of who you are and your personality, you can better decide how to brand yourself, okay? Keep in mind that many people struggle to choose a specific like niche um, because they don't want to limit themselves realize that your personal brand, like many corporate brands will change. Like I said, as you grow, um, as you evolve, your brand may change you and that's okay. Right. Um, it, it's totally fine, but know that it will evolve as time goes on. Number two, determine what you want to be known for. This is huge because this is going to play into a part of what story are you trying to tell? 
Um, your personal brand is more than a reflection of who you are today. It's a roadmap of where you want to go. In addition to understanding your current skills, um, assess your strengths, your weaknesses, and how they relate to what you do, right? Um, and what do you want to do next? What's an accomplishment you want to do, you want to get to? Um, have you ever earned an incentive trip? If no, maybe you want to earn an incentive trip. You want to be known for the chick that never misses an incentive trip, right? You want to be known for the chick that hits annual sales or annual mentor every month, every year, right? You want to maybe be known as the person that's a good recruiter or the person that's a good sales salesperson or the person that just lends a hand. What is the story you want to tell? By doing this, you're going to uncover skills and traits that make you different as well as areas where maybe you need it, you need improvement. Maybe you need to gain some more knowledge, right? To move to the next level. Um, so determine what you want to be known for. Number three, define your audience. This is huge, guys. I know you may have heard this in any type of marketing course that you need to know who you're speaking to because a lot of the times we get caught up because we think we want every single person to be our customer. Every single person being our customer is not a good strategy. That's a, let me throw something out there and see if somebody bites. Let me hope and wish that somebody is going to come and find me. No, you need to create and find your audience. Who is it that you want to come and be attracted to you. I'll tell you off the top who I want. I want those people. So my message for me is I know where I came from. I know my background. I know um, what, you know, I was raised, how I was grown in our culture, our community. People don't do this and be, they're not successful, right? That's not the norm. That's not the average, right? But maybe along the way, I can find someone that I can give this opportunity to that made them change their mind and their vision for the future. Those people that maybe in the beginning don't believe that they can make this work, those are the people that I'm looking for. The people that with a little bit of belief, a little bit of putting something into their ear that I can make them understand, they can do whatever the hell they wanna do with this business. It's totally up to them. Those are the people um, that I'm looking for. That is what I want to be known for. I want to be the person that is going to help somebody else flip their switch, change their story, um, move forward, do better, be better for their family. Like that is what I want to be known for. So whatever that looks like in my target market or my target audience, right? Um, that's who I'm trying to reach out to. Okay. Um, so the sooner you define your audience, the easier it is for you to craft your story because you'll get better at understanding the type of story you need to tell and where you need to tell it to. Okay. So I know exactly my story. I like, I I've told you guys, I've told some of the leaders many a times that, um, recruiting comes easier to me because that is my passion. That is what I love to do. Like, yeah, sales, I'm getting better because you learn, right? What, what your weaknesses are, you learn and then you push. But what comes easy to me, what pulls at my heart, what I know that I love from this business is helping somebody understand that they can be better than they were right now. Like you can be better, you can do better. This business can drive you in places that you would never even imagine it could take you because I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago, okay? So you have to define your audience. Think about that. Go research it. Look and see, like, who are the people you're trying to talk to? Who are the people you want to attract? Number four, research your desired industries and follow the experts. I cannot tell you this enough. This is something that I did early on. The first time I got on a Saturday call, I heard Becca say she was making 15000 at that time a month. Guess what Jessica did? Jessica went to Facebook and she went to go find Becca Levi because I want to hang with the people that are making moves like that, because that is where I eventually want to be. Now, you got to go find those experts. That's why getting on calls, stepping outside of your comfort zone, getting on the new consultant call, um, getting on all those calls, that's where you connect. Damn, I heard that girl, she was spitting fire. I need to go find her on Facebook, follow her, watch her story, see how she interacts with people, see how she works her personal brand, and you do you and feed off of that. You got to, as you start mapping out what you want, okay, you have to go find out who those thought leaders are in whatever field or area or thing that people are doing. Follow them, go online, see what they got, watch their YouTube, watch their blogs, 
see what they're doing, find out what you want to do, and you tweak it for you, okay? Um, that is, you got you got to do the work, because so many people are like, well, I, I, I can't do this, I don't, guess what, I didn't know how to do all that, but guess what, I stayed connected, I got on calls, I saw those people that were moving and shaking, I earned a trip, I got on a boat with people that were moving and shaking, and I listen to them i i went to events because i know that's where the movers and shakers are at i got i went to events i learned from those people and guess what i sit here today as one of the top 0.2 people in our company because i'm a mover and shaker and that's what you want to do you got to go find those experts watch them like a hawk and do as they do you ain't got to reinvent the wheel the wheel's been driven for you you got to go find it and follow it number five Ask for, um, this one is, is for informational interviews. As you start forming a list of people or maybe your list of 100 or whatever, um, or maybe you're finding other people within the industry. Like guys, when you go to events, a lot of the times, um, I know you guys maybe don't know who she is, but she was one of the um, executives, uh, Cincy's uh, key executives at the time. And when uh, Cincy called me to fly out, um, I was chosen as one of the five to fly out to Boise to do videos with Cincy's production team. Um, they went to my YouTube channel, found me, somebody referred, like, um, put my name out there. So <laughs> y'all know Jessica jumped on a plane, went there. Um, and I remember Janet, she was one of the executives at the time. And she always said, she said, leaders are born at events when you don't take the opportunity to use those events and those incentive trips as your stepping stones you are missing a huge key in leveling up because that is where you're going to find those times that you can have those informational interviews with the movers and shakers with the people that are out there making it happen the people that are actually earning the awards earning the trips doing the things right um so don't use those times um use those times wisely don't let them just slip through your fingers okay number six this is huge prepare an elevator pitch i know this may sound crazy as you begin to think about your personal brand spend some time crafting a pitch a 30 to 60 second story about who you are whether you're attending a networking event this is something that's so funny because I remember way years ago when I heard your create your 30 second elevator pitch, they said if you were put in a networking event and you just went and they gave you 30 minutes and a lot of these networking events that happen, um, they do do that. They do a round table with everybody who was invited and they say you got 30 minutes to explain who you are, what you do, right? Um, about who you are, whether you're attending a network event, a formal party, having a, an elevator pitch, prepared, make it easy to describe what you do and where you're going um, in your career. And I remember in the beginning, this was my elevator pitch because I thought, okay, how can I get that you can buy, host, and join in 30 seconds? Like, I talk too damn much for that. How the hell am I going to do that? So I would say, I remember we used to do a lot of in-person events, right? So I remember I, I crafted my elevator pitch to be this. I'd be like, oh, you know, I would think, I want you to think like I'm at an event and a person comes up to me, right? So I, I say, hey, how are you doing? My name is so-and-so, How you know, they're looking at whatever. And I'm like, well, girl, um, just as nice to meet you. Well, I just want you to know that this is Scentsy. It's an amazing home fragrance um, product. And the great thing about our business is that you can get it three ways. You can uh, get it for uh, you can buy it retail, you can get it for free, or you can join and make money like me. Simple. But I said, you can buy, you can host, or you can join. And I explained that was my 30 second elevator pitch. And then they're, they're looking, they're like, you, you make money off of this? Or I can get it for free? And that gives you your entryway to whatever hits them. So you have to have those things, um, together like I know it sounds really crazy to to come up or craft your pitch in 30 to 60 seconds but you need to if you expect to be a leader within this company you got to be quick on your feet and you got to have to have a mouthpiece so when somebody comes and tells you something you know exactly how to react back to them um 
Keep your elevator pitch brief by focusing on a few key points you want to emphasize. This could include um, that you're looking for new people uh, to join, um, strengthen your particular niche, recently increase the value of your current product or company. So again, like I said, if you're wanting to recruit more because that's where you're having a hard time, think about a 30 second elevator pitch for recruiting, right? Um, base it over what you want, but have those short and concise pitches when you need them because they are important. Number seven, embrace networking. As you cultivate your ideal personal brand, it is important to network regularly and effectively to grow your professional circle. Connect with your peers, industry thought leaders by going um, to events, informal, formal. The more connections you make, the more value you can provide in, provide in your interactions, the more likely it is your personal brand will be recognized. I cannot tell you how more far, how more true this is. Um, at the events, don't be shy about asking fellow attendees to meet you, to talk to you, to have a conversation. Remember, you don't get a chance to, um, if you don't get a chance to connect at an event, reach out to somebody after the fact. Guys, if I would have stayed with my mouth shut, I would not be where I am at in the Sensi world right now. I wouldn't have almost 4,000 YouTube subscribers. Um, I'll be totally honest. I have given so much to the Sensi community. Not that I'm trying to brag, not that I'm trying to say that that is good or bad, but what I am going to tell you is that it makes me happy because I get messages all the time from people telling me, you have helped me do blank, blank, blank in my business. You have helped me do this, this, this in my business. They're not even, I'm not getting a dime for those people and I don't even care, but that is my story. I told you guys in the beginning, those are the audience that I'm trying to attract. I'm trying to get those people that maybe don't believe in themselves, that maybe don't think they can do this because of every reason under the sun of what someone has already told them they can't do. That is my audience. I don't care if I'm making a dollar off of them or I'm not, because as long as I build my audience and I build my brand, I'm going to be out there. People are going to know me. The right people that need to come to me will come to me. Do you know how many times I have networked with other leaders in the industry because of that? Because I reached out to them because they've asked me because they have, um, you know, Girl, I saw you on a YouTube and you are fire at this. Can you come do a training? And they are fire at something else. And they come and do a training for my team. But you have to put yourself out there because if not, you're going to stay stagnant and you're never going to grow. Okay, number eight, ask for recommendations. Having current or former friends, leaders, peers um, endorse you is one of the easiest and most effective ways to define your personal brand. This is huge. Um, allowing others to communicate your value to you, just as the business might cultivate customer reviews, testimonials um, to use in their sales or marketing pieces, you too must cultivate your own, own reviews of everything you do. Like, how many times do we have the share um, whenever you take your, uh, the sh what is it called? The snap and share um, when you go and leave an order, right? So if you guys pay attention or if you're on my Instagram, you know that that's huge to me because it is building my brand without me even doing anything. I tell my customers, tell me what you thought about the product, go and tag me on Instagram and I post it to a highlight on my page. Do you know how many times I've had people that aren't even my customers go and like they're sucked into my highlights and they look and they say, oh my gosh, you take care of your customers. You're damn right I take care of my customers. And guess what? They now become a customer of mine because i that is my brand. I want people to know that I got my customers and they're not going to go anywhere else. But if you are not living and breathing your brand like that, you're discrediting yourself. Like you're not doing, you're doing your business a disservice by not doing that. Um, uh, so testimonials, even with your team, guys, this is something that I'm actually in the process of doing um, testimonials because I want to put a video together for all of us to be able to share. I want people to tell me I want a single mom. I want um, a um, working mom. 
I want um, someone that just wanted this to take the kit in the beginning and they've been successful. I want testimonials from all different types of consultants so I can put it together, make it in a video, in a training platform where I can give to all of you where you can go use it and give it to someone who's thinking about joining, right? Because there's all different types of realms and testimonials of people that have made this business be successful, but maybe one won't touch them, but another one will. So sometimes you have to think outside of the box when it comes to those type of things in building your personal brand. Um, number nine, I can't even, you guys know, grow your online presence. One of the most important aspects of personal branding is making sure your online presence is engaging. Um, with so many different social media tools available today, your online presence will likely look different depending on what platform you use, but your story should not change. Um, it should match across all platforms. Once you know where your targeted audience is, is most likely to run. Um, you can redouble your efforts in telling your story best there, right? But once you know your story, once you know your target audience, that is where you need to fuel everything into. I'm going to be honest with you. I've really, 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 really focused on Instagram as my platform. I used to kind of be everywhere. And I'll tell you the other day, it's funny because my sister in law here and she's like, oh, yeah, did you see so-and-so on Snapchat? I'm like, dude, I haven't even logged into Snapchat in probably over 35 days. Um, and because that is not where I'm fueling my energy. I'm fueling my energy to Instagram because that is where I'm getting the most back. And so I think it's important for you to understand that you have to put emphasis and fuel one platform before you try to dip one dabble in 10 and not be great in either one of those. Be hella great at one and then move on to the next. But now, if you're thinking that you can skip out on social media right now, you're gonna have a hard time. I'm just saying. So you have to have a social media presence, okay? And um, number 10, although social media is important, I want you to really understand this because I think a lot of people miss this piece. Remember, your personal brand isn't just what you portray online. Your brand is more than just your online persona or the highlight reel of Instagram. It's more than that. It's how you carry yourself at home, in your business, in your office. It's how you, with the things that you do daily, it's your reputation. It's everything. So just like Janica said earlier, you know, you want to be real um, because I'll be honest with you, the same way you see me on social media is the same way you're going to see me if I see you in the streets. I ain't going to be any um, meaner. I ain't going to be any nicer. I ain't going to be any quieter. I ain't going to be any, the, I am who I am on social media the same way I am if you see me out in the street. I'm not going to portray something online for the followers that I am not going to portray or speak out in the streets. That's just how I roll. That's the way my brand is. I am going to portray who I am through the camera the same way I do in the streets because that is your brand. It is what makes you. Don't be fake. Um, <laughs> she said she is me. Uh, let's see. Reinvent your personal brand. Okay. So again, last, last thing is your brand is always going to continue evolving, right? Um, as you grow, as you evolve, your brand is going to change. Um, as long as it reflects who you are, that's all that matters. Um, I can't like cue that in enough that if you try to be somebody you're not dude you're gonna struggle you're gonna struggle and you're gonna struggle and you're gonna say why isn't this working because people know you're being fake that's why so don't be somebody that you're not um so that arm that are <laughs> getting me talk those are my top 10 tips on building a personal brand does anybody have any questions any of the leaders want to add on to that <laughs> Don't need a girl, she don't. 
Anybody? My only add on is learn how to use Canva. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's how you brand. True story. And a lot of what I did today, um, I didn't, I could have gone deeper into like, uh, first of all, I'm going to say, if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, you need to go follow me on Instagram. Um, like that is my platform. Um, I personal branding is huge. It's one of my favorite things. Um, I truly feel like when I finally got a good hold on who I was, my message I was trying to give out, um, who is my target audience? Once I figured out all those things, because I'm going to tell you guys, I am a, a person that likes to, when I can't figure something out or I really want to figure something out, I will spend late nights trying to figure it out. And I'm going to tell you, I've been through so many trainings on social media, so many trainings on personal branding. And if I can take any, or if the biggest piece of advice I can give you is be you. Don't try to be this other person that you're seeing because they're doing this, 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 and that. That don't matter. Stay in your lane. If you stay and you focus in your lane, it's not even going to matter because you ain't got time to see what anybody else is doing. When you stay in your lane, yes, go seek and research and look and follow, but don't stay there. Stay in your lane, stay focused, stay true to you because that is building your brand. And Sensi is not your brand. Sensi is your vehicle. Your brand is your face. It is who you are, it is how you act, it is how you portray yourself. It is your whole vibe from when you get up to when you go to sleep. Sensi is not your brand. Um, and when people realize that, I feel like their business shifts. Um, before you would see me wear from head to toe, I'd be sensied out. Like, um, I would have, um, I mean, it, it was always sensi, 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 posting sensi, sensi, sensi. I don't do a lot of that anymore. Yes, I do have, I do have, you know, clothing and things like that. But, um, I really had to realize that Sensi is not my, my brand. Jessica Villarreal is her brand. Um, and when you guys realize that, I really feel like it, it, it gives you a shift in your business and it makes you think it makes you act. It makes you react to things differently. Um, when, especially right now that 90% of many of our businesses, 90% of the, of the pr productivity of our business has been online because of COVID. And um, if all you're seeing, a lot of the people that I hear struggling are those people that want to go get a workstation flyer and post it. And then they're saying, I can't sell. Nobody wants to buy. Yeah, because you're putting Sensi as your brand instead of you. Um, you have to make it a lifestyle. You have to not use um, those workstation pictures. Like if you're not using your free and your half price to buy stuff, to have in your home and take a picture of that and do a video with it or quick snippet or clip of a video, then you're going to continue struggling with sales and hosting and people joining your team because it's the same thing that over 150,000 other consultants are doing. What are you doing to stand out? um so just think about that um okay any questions it can be about what we talked about today and it's fine now is y'all time dang y'all are today. hey Hey, Jess, this is Ash. Can I chime in real fast? Where are you at? Are you have your screen on? Uh, no, I'm not screen sharing. I look a hot mess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I was going to say, I just wanted to add on to, I know Jessica talked about personal branding. Um, I wanted to go say, go clean out, go remove yourself from unnecessary groups if that makes sense, um, you'll be surprised. It will free up your newsfeed quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> and that will also, and, and stay in groups that are gonna benefit you. It, it like benefit you and your personal branding. Like I, I know there's 
a million Cincy groups out there um, and a million different makeup groups and boutique groups. Stick to one <laughs> um, and just, it'll, like I said, it'll, I don't know. I, it was very relieving and kind of took a weight off my shoulders. Like Jessica said, don't go try to be in everything. I guess that's what I'm getting at. It's just keep it simple. <laughs> Stick to what's going to keep you focused and not what's going to keep you distracted. I well, guess that's what, guess sure. what I'm going for. I'm trying to say that last day you hit it on the nail. Stay what is going to keep you focused and not distracted because them distractions, boy, will take you off course. <laughs> I think that we should do an additional training on branding to where we like Ashley speaks for one because Ashley just moved to a totally different state and revamped her business completely. So I'm sure there's a lot of things that she used, you know, tool wise to do that. Um, I think we should do a screen sharing demo of Canva flyers because I know that there's a lot of so, people that don't really know that. <laughs> I hate to cut you off, but y'all want to know what I did? <laughs> Literally deleted everything i deleted my business i know y'all are probably like what are you talking about you deleted everything you crazy person like so like i was trying to do snapchat twitter and vip page and business page and team page like i literally i cut it all out like just yeah i'm going back to the basics you're getting a label basic samples literally y'all I took it back to the basics like I'm not trying to cut you off and try to do a whole training but I'm just keeping it 100 with y'all like I just I, I was like nope I'm gonna do I'm only gonna focus on what's income producing and that's all I did <laughs> and I made director in a whole new state with all new com customers com customers I can't even say it <laughs> Hi, PRV, FY. Oh yeah, my PRV's been through the roof. Like I've been like 2K and 3000 since I've moved here. Not knowing nobody, just I put myself out there. I'm also very outgoing. So I will say that like, I have no problem talking to walking you. up to, huh? talking to anybody <laughs> yeah yeah no no problem at all literally <laughs> I was asked to do a training on that at SFR um yeah so yeah whole other topic but anyways yeah <laughs> sorry <think> Janica <laughs> I think that it would be a good follow-up um training for us to um maybe have two or three people like show some of their branding things um like janica said um but what i want you guys to take from today i really want you to take those things that we talked about and find out who you are what it is that you want so i want you guys in the chat there's 30 people on here i want you to put who feels like they have a good sense of their branding like they they have a good sense of branding and who feels like they do not and if you feel in the middle, put in the middle. <laughs> okay, so, so. In the middle. In the middle. I am really getting there in the middle. Okay, good grass. Middle, middle. Okay. I definitely do now. It took me a while really get there. Good. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Um, so what I would tell you, your action steps or something to take to move forward is, um, you know, think about it after you, you know, think about what is your message? What's your target audience? Do you guys feel like, you know, off the top who your target audience is? Do you feel like off the top, you know, what your message you're trying to, um, portray is, um, in your business, just your message, like period. Uh, follow the big dogs with Cincy. Look at their Instas and Facebook business page. Huge tip there. Yeah, no, I don't. Okay, Katie said no, I don't. And I think that's um, huge because again, you get caught up 
when you don't know who it is. If you are running a business and you think everybody on social media is your target audience, you're doing it all wrong. All wrong. You have to really dig deep and find out who are those people that you're wanting to, who, if you could choose anybody that you wanted to shoot, to choose to be your customer or to be your next host or your next team member, what does that person look like? How old are they? Where are they at? What do they do? What do they do for fun? What is their job? Um, uh, what are some of the things that they like? That is how you find your target audience. You find the demographic, you find where they're at, you find um, where they're spending their most time, like what generation are they like, that is how you find your target audience. And um, you have to kind of sit down and grasp that. That's why I said that this is kind of like a next level um, training. But even if you're new, guys, this is something that businesses do from day one. So don't think that just because you're new, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. You, by all means, should be doing this. Um, so ask yourself those questions. If you don't have anything in personal branding, you have no idea, um, you know, those are some of the things you can ask yourself. Or um, what are your favorite colors? What is something that people associate you with? Like some people said cactuses. I think of zebra. I think of Kim. I think of rose gold. I think of Lucy. I think of a yellow sunflower. I think of Carrie. Those are all their marks, right? So find what that is for you and start thinking about it. Brand it. I mean, you don't slap the Scentsy logo on everything because Scentsy ain't your brand. You are your brand. What is it that you want to portray? What is it that people you want to leave and have someone remember you when they see that? Um, I can't tell you how many times. Okay, this is how you know that personal branding works because you will get a message from somebody saying, oh my gosh, Jessica, I saw this and thought of you. Half of the time, it's Ray done right now. Like, or something Christmas, they're like, OMG, I saw this and I immediately thought of you. Or they'll see a quote, right? And they'll, I, got, I get this all the time. They'll send it to me, girl, I saw this and you were the first person I thought about. That is when you know your personal branding is working. Um, so that is all that I have for you guys. We are at the hour. Um, again, <clears throat> somebody say something? Oh, I accidentally unmuted myself, but I'll wait till you stop recording. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? So as always, you guys um, that were on, 31 of you, nice, that are still on right now, um, go to our page, our pages, whatever page you're on, um, and post um, an aha that you had. Post something. I will try to get this, um, you, uh, this video on YouTube ASAP. Y'all got to bear with me. My laptop is like on its last end and I cannot do it at home. I can only do it at work. Um, I need a new laptop that is next on the list. But um, I will try to get it up by tomorrow. Uh, but go post something, something that you took away, something that you're, I need a one-on-one -on -one session on this because it's a lot. Um, what you need is go research personal branding, Patricia. Um because that is how you're going to learn. You're going to learn by looking at those things, realizing what it means to brand yourself, um, what that looks like, what that feels like, what, you know, and that is where you'll start getting ideas. But we will definitely do a follow up to this in more depth of breaking it down of the pieces of personal branding. I wanted to give you guys the rough I know some of you, some of you are already on that level, but there's a lot of you that are not that don't even personal branding is not even something you ever mention out of your mouth. So I want you guys to understand what it is, what it means. And it's next level. Like it is next level. Like a lot of these people that put middle it's because they've already somewhat gotten to certain level in what their brand is to them. Some of us are in the very beginning that they don't, you know, you're new, so you really don't even know what that looks like. And that's where I wanted to give you guys first, um, like a, a, a foundation to start from. Ask yourself some of those questions, do some of those things, go research what is personal branding. Um, 
and kind of go from there. And then we will definitely uh, get a follow up. And um, I'm gonna uh, uh, throw one person in because I absolutely love her brand. Um, when I think of and, and this is how you know that that person is leveling up and evolving into their brand because when I see boho decor, when I see um, <laughs> a badass picture, like when I say like the way the filter of it is, the way the positioning of it is, um, uh, when I see um, like post, not postcards, but like Canva um, marketing that has leveled up, um, I see the name because I know that's her name of her brand and her business, Janica. Janica has leveled herself up on so many levels with her branding. And I love it because she's not branding Cincy. She's branding Janica. And I think it's like smelly still. What is it, Janica? Selly Smellies. Colin's that's last name is Sell. Oh, that's why. I've been planning this. <laughs> since before this motherfucker even proposed so we're here now gotcha okay okay that's why it's okay that makes total sense um but i i when i see that i know it's janica um and that that's huge because guys it's not it's not easy that's why i say it's next level it definitely takes some time to grasp all of that but if you're trying to level yourself up and stand out in a pool of 200,000 Cincy consultants, you got to do the work. You ain't never going to get around not doing the work. Um, so uh, we will definitely have a follow-up with breaking maybe pieces of the personal brand down and how some of us do that. Maybe we can share our screens. We can show you um, better than we can tell you. So um, go post on your pages and aha, and I will see you guys. Alrighty guys.